I got employee of the month at work. Let's give a round of applause. That's right. Your boy got employee of the month out of like a hundred. I don't know how many motherfuckers are, are in my shift, but out of everybody, the fucking drivers, the handlers, the fucking, I don't know if the managers are in it, but literally out of everybody in my shift, I was the number one draft pick for this employee of the month shit. And I got it. And I got a bonus on my check. Hopefully that comes through next week. Cause I'm trying to buy some cocaine. Smash Max was the turn out of my lifestyle Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other Decided that gad is karma, you wet prada, the devil like inside your body. Hey now what the angels fly over my head uh-huh 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 we are back with another episode of the god's hour podcast with your boy big serbavelli back in the place to be la america superior to palace 81 we in a building live and direct time and time again tell your girlfriend for me it's your boy mr nine times so it got overcasted. Yes, it did. Today, it got overcasted. It was sprinkling, which is crazy as fuck. I don't know why it's sprinkling when it's dead ass at the end of July. July, July. It was overcasted, bro. I woke up. It's like 6 in the morning. Police at my door. Woke up at 6 in the morning. I look outside. I'm like, is it overcasted, bro? It's been like 100 degrees the last week, and it's overcasted today. That's how you know climate change is real. Don't have, don't be letting these people fool you that Joe Biden got elected and is and is the world is ended. No, bro, climate change has been uh, real since the dawn of the fucking dinosaurs, bro. This shit is getting real out here, bro. It was sprinkling. There was like a, a, a Pokemon event. They had a, a Squirtle Community Day Classic again, the remake 2.0. So I was out there catching Squirtles today. Really fun. Actually, it kind of wasn't really fun. I was just in my car driving around like a fucking tonto and trying to catch, trying to get the one shiny Squirtle with the glasses for all my Pokemon fans out there. Yes, I was for all my non-Pokemon fans out there. Sorry, but this is the nerd part of the podcast. We got to get the fuck up out of the way. I'm driving around to catch this one motherfucker. It took me like 30 Poke stops, which is the equivalent of walking three miles. I don't know. I don't know how long it took me to do it, but I was just walking around the park this park, that park, this park, that park, all around the motherfucking city, right? And as I'm going to the one last big park, I go to usually, I think I name dropped it before. I'm not going to name drop it now. But finally, on the last stop, the last research, research number 30 or whatever the fuck it was, I got the shiny Squirtle with the sunglasses. So I was like, thank God, bro. The nightmare is over. The grind is done. I could just go home. Now I have like 40 shiny squirtles. And it blows my mind. But they need to do this more often where they do two community days. Um, Either like they should do one when it initially happens and the second one at a later point. Like when they do December community day. I don't, I don't like December calm day because it's like, what if you only wanted to grind that one Pokemon you miss? Now you have it jumbled up with the 11 other Pokemon that came out during the year. So now your odds went from one in 35 or whatever it is. Chances of you getting that shiny is now one. And what's 35 times 12? I'm not going to do the fucking math, but it's in the hundreds. You know what I mean? Now your chances are slim to none to get that shit. That that happened to me with a uh, gibble. I tried to get a shiny gibble during December community day. Not that I needed one. I had more than enough shiny gibbles. And I just hashed one, by the way. But 
I think I caught one, and that was me getting lucky. I think I wanted some other shinies from the other different Pokemon, which I didn't get. I think Eevee, I think I only got, out of the whole December Calm Day that happened in 21, I probably got, like, maybe one shiny Eevee, Gibble, Snivy, and that's all I, I remember at this point off the top of my head because I'm not about to waste time thinking, you know, it's just straight off the cuff. So that was today, and... So over the weekend, it was kind of emotional for me. Who the fuck just hit me up right now? I got to put my phone on silent. This shit always happens. Every fucking time, straight down the middle, I get something, some sort of another with this bullshit. Put on airplane mode. No, just go on silent. Okay. So very emotional weekend. Why? Because I don't know if I explained this uh, to y'all last time, but this shit, this fucking... Got this polo and this fucking label's over here scratching the fuck out of my back, yo. So over, let's say, I, I want to say it was Monday or last Friday. Last Friday, I was walking Presley and he just sat down. Like, I don't know what it was. I noticed that he's been, like, more tired, more panting, like, when we've been going on our walks and stuff. So I thought, hmm, like, that's kind of fucking weird, right? And he just sat down. And then he laid down, which was like, it, it brought all the, it, that really brought my attention because I was like, this shit is severe. Like if this fool, he's never done that. He usually he's like, break, like he's usually, um, the one to fucking keep going, like keep me going and he'll walk forever. But I noticed he's been holding back. And I don't know, I don't know what it was. So I just carried him to my car and it just seemed like he couldn't breathe. So we took him to the vet and it seemed like that was like an isolated incident. Maybe he didn't know that was like an episode he had, uh, whatever it is. But uh, we got, I took him to the vet yesterday and we got his blood drawn. We're going to see the results uh, next week. We got his x-rays done. He got a steroid shot for like a whole bunch of stuff like allergies and all this other. It's an anti-inflammatory shot that works in conjunction with a lot of other um, things that they have for dogs. They stuck a thermometer up his ass. They didn't. He didn't like that one at all. And I'm like, really? Like, you couldn't have checked? Like, that's like the only way to shove a thermometer up your ass? Like, didn't doctors do that for humans? Like, back in the day, don't they have the thing where they just search your head? Not that I put a gun in my head, but like, you know, they search. Okay, that's the same thing. But they put the gun. They put the fucking thermometer on your thing. The beep. And I just did it again. And they register your thing. Don't they have that? F- they register your fucking uh, thermostat or whatever. Don't they have that for dogs? Like, I don't understand why they, they had to shove. Okay, so we're going to pass that, right? I didn't like that. And and with Presley, he's not. He don't like um people. I mean, he's not like. He don't like people, but. Not that he don't like people. It's just that. Um. He don't like people touching him, like strangers and all that. You don't touch him at all. Like he'll get, he'll get snappy. And Doc did a, a, a good thing by putting the the thing over his snout so he wouldn't like try to bite because he did that the last time when he was scared and we went to the vet by the house. Um, and that was kind of that was kind of awkward. But that was the first time I really got to see Presley was like, oh, okay, like, he's really in a fight or flight mode, and he's fighting. Like, fuck that shit. Like, y'all ain't going to take me alive, you know? So with the doctor and all that shit, they checked him out. They say he needs a a dental work or uh, his mouth cleaned or whatever the fuck. And there's no way they're going to work on him without him being asleep or some shit. There's just no way. For sure, um, they're going to need to give him some sort of sedative or something. Presley don't like nobody touching him and shit, especially with the teeth. I've tried to brush his teeth. He don't like his his teeth brushed. He don't like his nails clipped. He don't like none of that. He don't like his ears clipped. He don't, he don't like none of it. The only thing he really likes uh, as far as grooming, he don't even like it. But when I bathe him, he tolerates it. He don't even like that shit. So... um. The bill was kind of was kind of high, so we pretty much not really split it, but my pop paid for most of it, and then my it was pretty much like half and half with my sister and my dad, and then I paid like a buck on it. 
So it wasn't like I didn't have no wins on it. I had ends on a bill, but it was just like it caught me at a bad time because I had to pay off like a bunch of my bills and shit and, you know, whatever. Right. So the good thing is that I have Fetty had to put down some sort of respite on 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 what on the fee. Right. And the last time I took Presley to the vet is because he was like he kept chewing his paws and they became like inflamed. And, like, he was literally, like, bleeding from his paws. So we had to go take him to the vet. They taped his paws up like he was some sort of boxer. And that was some scary shit. I'm not going to lie, y'all. And the way the 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 doc was going about the whole checkup and all that, he said he was in pain. Like, he was touching his back and Presley had a jaw on his back. And coupled with the fact that Presley's getting old and I have to, like, live with the fact that he's not going to be with me forever and just everything it got to me. And I was getting emotional and shit. And and I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I got home, because I had to leave Presley with the doctors and they were going to do some work on him, x-rays and all that. It uh, it got to me emotionally. I was crying and shit pretty much uh, when I got to my house. And I was tearing up on a car ride back home. I was crying all the way to, like, the vet. Like, I was good. Like, I stopped crying by the time I was leaving to go pick him up. And thank God, like, the doctor told me, like, his x-rays, it was, like, no big shit. He didn't need no surgery. They gave him, like, prescribed him some medicine. They prescribed him a muscle relaxer, a steroid, and pretty much, like, a pain reliever, which I'm like, yo, like, why are you trying to dope my dog out? Like, you know, my sister was, like, concerned about the same thing, you know, As some of you may know, if you're up with the podcast, me and my sister aren't really on the fucking coolest of terms right now. But it was cool that she came through for him. She came and saw him, picked up her mail. She wanted to see what was good. I broke down everything to her and shit. And so from now on, he's going to sleep downstairs. And I knew what it was. It was like he's jumping off the bed um, and then me uh trying to push him like pull him on the leash while we're going on walks i'm pretty sure that didn't fucking help so no physical activity on doctor's recommendate our doctor's orders no physical activity pretty much stay inside for four weeks and they have his medication for a week and i told my my parents i'm like yo like they gave him all this dope and shit but i don't want presley all doped up like i want to give him on i'm gonna get him on Maybe like a cycle, you know what I mean? I I definitely want him on this anti-inflammatory medicine. I think that's good for him. But a steroid and a, I mean, I think that's, but a pain relieving and a muscle relaxer, they go hand in hand. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking of going on a cycle with those, like one day pain reliever, one day muscle relaxer, you know, break it up like that. So he don't build up a tolerance to it. And then like, if he needs it, um, we'll have it instead of getting it all you know whatever i'm finding my parents on that one but it was just kind of it makes sense to me like you know i'm not gonna have presley all fucking all chaquada or whatever it is all on my watch you know what i mean like i'm just not i told my pop like if they fucking prescribe you xanax zoloft and fucking vicodin are you gonna pop and they prescribe you two doses a day are you gonna pop that shit like just because of whatever like nah man like my dog is a soldier. I'll give him the, the medicine I deem that's necessary. I mean, I can't speak for homie, but I'm just like, you know, he's doing really good. He's sleeping right now. He, everything is good in the neighborhood and shit. So really, I think, I mean, I don't want to say I got over emotional about it, but it was just like, you know, like, uh, it is what it is, man. Like, I don't, I don't really cry like that. You know what I mean? It, it, it takes a lot for me to cry like it. And I, I don't even think it was just that. I think it was just a lot of shit has been happening in my life. And it just built up to like fucking now my dog. Like, don't even tell me my dog's going to go out on me now. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of what it was. Um, and, and, and not to say that it's bad to be emotional, but it's just like. You know, life gets fucking challenging and you go through these emotional waves and, you know, at some point you got to release it. It's got to come through somehow. Some people it's substance abuse, other people it's anger issues. And for me, thank God, it's just like crying it out, thug tears, you know what I mean? Crocodile tears or whatever it is. (sighs) Shit, I'm fucking tired. 
Uh, yesterday, I didn't even get that much sleep because I woke up early. As f- I did the show at Firewater Brawl Speak on that uh, Friday night. We'll talk more about that later. Woke up early as fuck. My dad woke me up at like 5 in the morning. I'm like, why are you waking me up at 5 in the morning? Don't do that. I need my fucking sleep, Holmes. So I didn't really get that much sleep from yesterday. And then today it was like I got like an hour more sleep. But still like, you know, I ended up taking a nap. And I'm noticing like uh, sometimes like maybe three or four days out of the week I'm taking like these hour long, long naps. And I think it's good for me because, you know, a lot of shit just is going on in my life. And I need to hit the reset button like halfway down the line so I don't just fucking, you know, just get burnt out quicker. So that's been what's been going on with Presley. And um, my cousin Jaime, I think I've sp- spoken on, on him. Uh, he passed away. In 2012, so it's been 11 years, my cousin Jaime. Um, I don't know if I broke down the whole shit of how he passed away. I don't know if I want to do that right now. Um, how he passed away pretty much. Um, fuck it, I'll just do it. So, my cousin Jaime, he lived in Highland with, uh, I think it's either his tia or it was his grandma on his dad's side. I don't know the whole thing, right? So he he was staying in Highland at this point. And basically, they him and his cousin, they wanted to get high. So they bought fucking hairspray bottles. And this is back then where it was like, like nausing and all that and, and, and huffing. Huff, huffing was a big thing. I think Nas kind of had been around, but I don't think Nas... I mean, has Nas ever been popular? That's such a fucking stupid thing that these kids do. But I remember trying to huff like when I was fucking like 11 or 12 or something like that. And I just was like, what the fuck am I even doing? Like, you know, uh, I was trying to do it through an axe uh, uh, thing, an axe spray. It was just horrible, man. I was like, to me, it just didn't, it didn't seem like an optical way to get faded. So what happened was Jaime had did the hairspray and I guess he fucking froze his brain or something like that. And from what they described to me, he was on the floor and his face was all pale and his eyes were bloodshot and there was like blood coming from his nose. This is from what I remember. And they had pictures of him on the floor. And I I remember not wanting to see them. Like the last thing, the last image of my cousin isn't going to be like him dead. Literally, the last image I have of, of Jaime in my head is like either when him and in, in those stupid shants he used to wear, like those jean short shants that like those punk people would wear. I forgot, like, though to me, they were like mad maricon ish, but I guess he pulled it off or whatever. But they're basically skinny jean shorts. Like skinny jeans cut into shorts, like either at the to to him it kind of looked like they were past the kneecaps, which looked even like freakier, freakier or something like that. Uh, whatever it was, right? The last memory I, I have of Jaime, um, we were smoking a swisher. We didn't even have no weed. We just had a swisher. I don't even know how my cousin got this shit because he was a minor. He probably had an older homie. That's probably what it was because at that point, to get a swisher, you had to be 18 and not 21. So that makes sense. Cause, but, but then again, he was probably like only a freshman in high school. So I still don't know. Or maybe I was a freshman in high school. No, I was going into high school. So that would have made him a sophomore. Okay. So that's totally plausible. He got some fucking, he had a Swisher. And then me and my cousin and I man were fucking smoking the Swisher on the street. And he's like, you guys just smoke it like this? You don't have any weed or what the fuck? And I remember my tia Sandra, uh, she picked me and uh, my cousin up. And then Jaime was uh, still at the at the family party. And I remember she was like, why do you guys smell like tobacco or something? We're like, oh, we were just kicking it around Jaime and he was smoking a cigarette. We completely threw it on Jaime. But like, I remember being like, in my head, I was like, yo, we kind of like snitched out Jaime on this shit. But thinking back on it, like it was like, yeah, we were fucking basically dumbass kids 
that's how I look at myself. Like they say, like teenagers as if that's more mature than you being a little child. You're a fucking child anyway. Like your brain ain't even developed and you don't even know if you like vanilla ice cream like that. You still got a few years to figure it out. Like if Rocky Road is better, you know what I mean? So Jaime was funny, man. Like he was probably like my funniest cousin. And, like, he was, like, really cool to me. I, I didn't really see him that often, but when I did, it was, like, really cool to see him. And he played guitar. He had a, an acoustic guitar. He was, like, sing. His whole style, his whole stilo, like, he made, like, I don't know if he made music, but I know he would, like, fuck around and and do, like, little freestyle shit with his guitar. His His whole thing was more, like, punk. So, like, I don't know if he listened to Blink-182, but that was more so, like, what I could compare, what was, like, more comparable to, like, his genre of music. And so, basically, Presley, what the fuck is going on? You good? So, yeah, uh, I really miss Jaime. Um, words can't even describe um, just, like, how much, you know, I miss him every day. Just, like, I miss uh, Raul and Ian and Josh. Uh, my close friends that I grew up with, you know, I, I completely disassociated myself from like all of that trauma. So I don't even really, I don't remember Ian's birthday or the day he passed. I don't even know the day he, oh, it was in March. I got the news in March. It was like somewhere around March. I think I still have like the little pin I had where he looked all wicked. I'm just not, I'm not good at at dealing with death and all this um, difficult trauma. So I think that's where it comes from. Like whenever I cry, I'm not used to crying. So it's like, when I cry, it's not like over bullshit, like an argument or something like that. It's really like things that have built up to a point where it's just too much. And I just let it all out, which is good. You know what I mean? If you're dealing with stuff, you got to deal with it. You got to man up and, and do that shit. Cause for the longest time I was straight up, just like either run into the bottle or run into the weed, which is like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. You should really take it upon yourself to deal with it as mature as you can and just be a man, you know, because when you don't have these vices, when you don't have these distractions, it's all you, you know what I mean? When you're alone by, I talked about this last episode, when you're alone and you have your own thoughts to deal with that night, that's when we really see what kind of man you are, what kind of person you are under under no surveillance, under nobody's watching you. It's just you alone in whatever room you're in. That's who you really are in that moment. Um, So I don't know. In, in the Mexican culture, like death is like a more celebratory thing where I feel like we've kind of got away from, you know, as far as like funerals and all that. I imagine like in during the Mayan times, like I'm pretty sure it was more like celebratory versus like Chicanos like here in America. It's more it's like really sad and it's like really somber. In the last like two funerals I've been to, I was just like numb. You know what I mean? Um like, I didn't really cry at my grandpa's, um, oh, hi, Matt, hi, Matt, cried like a bitch. Uh, my grandpa's funeral, though, before that, um, I don't really remember crying that much. I remember crying, you know, when they buried him a little bit, but for my tia Pati, it was just kind of like, it's different, you know what I mean? When you're a teenager, when you have your whole life ahead of yourself, and in an instant, you're not no longer here in the physical form. That's a lot different than when you've lived an extremely incredible life and you come from the struggle and you were you were able to see out things that your parents or your grandparents wouldn't have been able to provide for you. When you go out and you carry that and you accomplish certain things in your life and you get old and due to, you know, I don't want to say natural causes because what the fuck is a natural cause when you've lived a, a life a long life, a great life, and you become in pain and that's all your life is, is pain every day and you pass in the physical, that's not sad of me. That's just like, it's like you're no longer in pain. You're you're in a better place. And that's how I look at death now. It's kind of like I don't look at it like if it's this crazy, depressive, morbid thing. 
you know, and uh, my cousin was telling me, like, it's okay to cry at my tia Pati's funeral. And and there was a point where I wanted to, but it was just like, for what? You know what I mean? Like, I understand why my tios are crying because that's their mom. You know what I mean? But for me, it was just kind of like, I love my tia Pati. And it was just tripping me out because it was like, with my tia Pati, I don't know if I talked about this. Like, she pretty much saved my life. You know, I, I, I was really drunk one day and I wanted to go home. It was like three in the morning. And my tia Pati was like, no, make sure you don't go home. Take his keys, take his laptop. I did speak about this now that I'm thinking about it. But like, she was like, make sure he don't go home. I don't know. I think like with real, like with our family, we have like a real intuitive, um, what do they call that? Clairvoyant whatever the fuck they call that, premonitions or whatever it is, I think she really was either that or it was like she seen I was really fucked up and was like, nah, like this fool can't drive for shit. Whatever it was, right? My tia Pati pretty much saved my life by, you know, having me not um, drive home because that's that was my whole thing. Like I would get faded and I would go home. Like I wouldn't like sleeping at my tia's house. There was no beds. I had to sleep on the couch and I had back problems from when I was fat as fuck. So it was no way I, I I would like sleeping at my my tia Laura's house where my tia Patti was at um for the parties and all that and my tia Patti was like so awesome like she was such a sweet person and I don't ever remember her being mean like my grandma Paco she's definitely like uh more tough love you know what I mean my tia Rosa I would say even more so which I don't know why my grandma Paco had a like. I don't know their stories, but my grandma Paco from, she's the oldest, so she had to do more of the hardcore shit to provide for the family, like pick strawberries and shit. I spoke about that last time, but um, my tia Pati, she, I think what it was is like, she was the youngest. She was like, when they say like the golden child, I don't know if she was that, but she was definitely like, she was like you know, more provided for than her, than, than her sisters or brothers because of, um, I guess, I don't know, whatever it was, she might've looked the best. It was different times, you know what I mean? So basically let's just say she was the golden child or whatever the fuck it was. Right. So I know for a fact that my other tias had resentment towards my tia Pati. Um, you know, um, there's a whole beef between that shit, between the families. I feel like that's where a lot of, of it stems from is just jealousy and, and negative feelings that have come from the past. But it's like, you should never carry that over into like the newer generations because then you're fucking them up over no reasons. Like that's literally what it is. Like a lot of our family members don't get along because of he say, she say shit. And I feel like with the third generation though, like, with like my cousins and the cousins of the other families like we get those little crumbs of like what it is but we don't actually care like we don't care that our tias went through that not 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 that i'm saying that we don't care about it it's just that we're we're detached from it so we don't have that kind of brainwashing and programming oh don't fuck with that family because they're fucking they're a bunch of pricks or whatever it is it's just kind of like oh that's cousin from that side like What's up? Like, I don't have seen you in a while. Like, we just have that kind of dissociative relationship with the with the cousins. But my tia Pati, going back to her, she was awesome. She was, like, probably the most sweet, most loving. Uh, besides my grandma, she let me stay at her house a lot of the times. A lot of the times we would smoke in her house or around and shit like that. And she didn't like that. But, like, you know, she tolerated it. And... Um, she was one of my favorite tias, definitely my favorite tia from like my grandma's sisters and brothers and all that. Um, she was awesome. So rest in peace to my tia, rest in peace to Jaime. They're in a much better place. And Jaime, he recorded the song called Highway 18. And it's crazy because now I got to like go back in my old laptop, which used to be my sister's and find it and put it on, uh, I don't know if I'll release it. I, I don't think I'll release it, but I'll just have it around the family f for them to listen to. And it's pretty dope. Like he's, it's a cover to like some song, some band he liked. So shout out to Hyman, y'all. I know for a fact, like he had his little guitar. So I know if um, he didn't pass away, he definitely would have been making music with me and my cousin for sure. Like, we would have been doing songs. Maybe not. Like, he might, probably wouldn't have been rapping, but for sure, like, I would have wanted him to 
put down some melodies and we would have we would have done shit for sure like we would have like as as tight as me and my cousin are i wasn't that tight with hyman because i was really young and that was when i was just getting around mufasa and kicking it with him so for sure if if he was still alive we would be tight as fuck and we'd be doing music for sure um so yeah rest easy to the fan over um friday friday night i went to perform at firewater i perform ain't enough that's gonna be on green light three and what's funny is the dj i literally spoke on this person a handful of episodes ago right and I've always, ever since I put that clip out on Instagram, I didn't really think nobody was going to, you know, say shit about it. Nobody has said shit about it. But I do feel like this weird little energy, like, floating around. Maybe not with everyone else, but with her or him. Whoever it is, right? Whoever they would like to address themselves is... Like, the the, the fact that... See, this is the thing with changing times, right? Right? Um, I could give a fuck who you identify as, you know, you could fucking say I'm purple. You could say I identify as a fucking bat. I don't like, what does that have to matter? Like you're, you're a human being, bro. Like that, that don't, the whole, my title is fucking them or they is like, what the fuck does that even like that shit don't even register in my brain. You know, there's not even no way I could even properly put it to you. It's just, it don't register, right? So with this person, I felt like after I put out the post on my Instagram where I said, like, uh, if he or her is gay and shit, I didn't mean to be disrespectful, you know? One of the homies was like, yo, your podcast is like, you got the audacity. It's not that I don't have the audacity. It's that I say how I feel. And a lot of people don't. Like, a lot of people hold their tongues because they're afraid. Oh, what are they going to think? What are they going to say? Like, I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't. And people think, oh, this is just a show. And, like, uh, uh, when I talk to my dad, like, is that how you really talk to him? And I, yeah, bro. Like, what the fuck? You think this is a show? You think this is, like, me trying to fucking put on a mask in front? Like, oh, the God Tower. Oh. You know, like, it's it's not, bro. Like, this is me for show. Sure. Like, maybe I put some Sasson on it for the camera. But pretty much you're getting me. You know, you ask my family, ask my homies. Like, this is really who the fuck I am. So... And, and and I don't get offended when people tell me, oh, is this like really you and shit like that? Like, I don't really give a fuck because it's like, yeah, no shit, because you don't know me, bro. Like, you don't know jack shit about me, where I come from. You never grew up with me. So, yeah, of course, I'm going to fucking understand that you think I'm like this fucking character off of Adult Swim or whatever the fuck, wherever the fuck. That's fine. Like, I don't I don't care. But it's just like. If you have a problem with me, say that shit. Because the whole, like, having this weird, goofy energy around me and being fake, like, fake cool and shit, that's, like, to me, it's not that it's not cool. It's just that it's not appreciated, right? And it's just, like, if I'm extending my hand out and saying what's up and you're just, like, looking at me with, like, this weird, like, you know what I mean? It's very obvious that you're not, you don't got, you're not like, you're not cool with maybe something I said or yada, 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 right? So I just want people out there to know that, like, I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody. I'm, that's not what I'm not. The God's Hour isn't me fucking coming on here and, and, and telling everybody they could go fuck themselves, suck my dick. This is how I feel. No, bro. It's just like, I'm going to talk my shit. And if you don't like it, you can come see me. We could talk about it, have a conversation, and I can apologize. See, if you don't tell somebody they fucked up, how they gonna, how they not going to know like they fucked up? How they going to know that they fucked up if you don't tell them? You know, if you would just be like, hey, you know what I mean? I, I seen your podcast. You know, you said some shit that I didn't like. You know what I mean? I'd be like, you know what? My bad. That's not even how I meant it. That's not even how I was trying to come off. I thought I was being cool by not naming anybody and just being like as vague as I could about it. 
you know, and just being like, well, fucking whatever, just speak my truth. But if that's going to make people mad, like, come on, man, I want, like this isn't the fucking the roast of, of Firewater, right? Like this is just me coming on my platform and speaking about my life experiences. That's all it is, bro. It's not me trying to tarnish anybody or attack any ethnic groups or people of sexual preferences. Like, I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't. Not that I don't give a fuck about anybody, you know, any of them. I'm just saying, like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about that in in a way where I'm going to go out of my way to disrespect somebody. I'm not going to do it. Like, if that's how you rock, that's how you rock, bro. That's cool. That's not how I rock. I'm going to talk about my shit, but who cares, bro? Like, and if you want to get offended, then, hey, what the fuck is there to say? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, but I'm not going to know that if you don't say shit, right? So I think I've fucking reiterated that like three times now. So let's move the fuck on, right? Talking to Noah, man. I'm like, yo, Noah, which it's been like a year, bro. Like, let me get, let me get up on audio though, man. I need to come home. You know what I mean? Let just open the door. And let Sir Bavel come come through. I'll make some chicken or something like that. Something, right? It's it's about time I get back in 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 my element. You know what I mean? I've literally only performed two shows ever, right? Like a whole set. One of which was cool, but it was like I haven't. I, I that was like my very first one, right? So you can't really count that. You can't really be like, oh well fucking that was good or bad because that was the first one looking back at my first performance ever at firewater bar you could tell i'm really stiff i'm just you know and plus it's a tiny stage too so literally there's not really move, room to move around like it's literally fucking whatever this corner of the room is that's what it is I don't, i'm not fucking i don't got a big stage and i got a big stage like that now granted i am gonna perform at exhibit gallery shout out to the homie jesus uh, he sent me some shit about it. I'm going to check it out. I'm doing a podcast right now. So I'm not obviously not going to fucking take time out of my way to go see what's about. See what what's about it or whatever the fuck. But my first performance ever, it was kind of like, I'm real stiff. I don't know 100% of the lyrics, like 95%, but not to where, you know, I stumbled a few times. So whatever, right? Now I've been practicing. The homie Doug got me in training mode. So I pretty much know the full set backwards. Now I'm going to have to practice the second set, which I don't even have the song, uh, the set list for. And I got to do it like for sure. Like at this point, like tonight, I got to write down all the songs I'm going to do and then rehearse it every day up until that point. Because it's already going to be like three weeks from now or something. Like you don't think, no, not even like two and a half weeks. Like you think this shit. No, maybe more so three weeks. You think this shit isn't gonna... You think this isn't gonna, like, um... What the fuck? I just lost my train of thought. You think it's not gonna come fast. Like, you think you have all this time to prepare. You don't. Like, trust me. Tomorrow's gonna be next week, and then next week is gonna be a month from now. And then, boom, you're like, fuck. I haven't even rehearsed. That's what pretty much happened to me the first time I performed. I didn't know my lyrics. I literally spent like the last two or three days trying to get, uh, memorize all the lyrics from the six songs I performed, right? I performed half a fucking Illmatic on my first show. So that's what it is. Performing ain't enough. Every time I perform, this happens. Everyone is on their hippity dippity poppy type shit. Everything is like really more the modern era of rap. But when I go up there, I feel like I take everybody back to fucking 93 or some dumb shit, right? Because everyone's looking at me like... The last time I performed, I'm like, I didn't know how the crowd... Like, I didn't get no reaction. So I'm like, yo, are you... Y'all fuck with that or what? Everyone's like, yeah, woo, and all this shit. I'm like, all right, we'll fucking say that shit, bro. Like, what? Uh, Y'all not helping a brother out by just, like, being quiet, you know what I mean? Like, silence is golden, but fuck, man. Like, applause is diamond or whatever the fuck, right? Um, Just, just, I, I don't understand it. Like, I don't get, like... In the beginning, I seen a lot of people, they were fucking with it, but then it went from them being, like, bobbing their head to just, like... And I just seen that switch and I'm looking around, I'm performing, I'm like, okay, I got to block them out and just do my thing. And so towards the end, I'm like, 
okay, well, whatever. I fucking did my thing. And then a few people said, what's up? You know, they follow me on IG or whatever, follow for follow or whatever. And it was cool. You know, I just don't feel like I'm getting the right uh, crowd reaction that I want. But I mean, that's to be, what is it? Uh, that That's to be um, expected when my music is so different from everyone else. I'm like making my own beats. I'm like damn near on my own thing in my own lane. You know what I mean? Especially in the IE, nobody's making music like me, bro. Like nobody at all. I'm in my own lane on my own, the SS Serbavel. There's nobody making music like me. Everybody else is on this poppy sh- type shit. And that's what I call it. It might not be pop, like no Ed Sheeran type shit, but it's definitely not what everyone else is doing, like puffing on Zooties or Drake type shit or or Nip, shout out Nipsey Hustle. But that's just not the stilo I'm doing. Literally what I'm doing is like a more raw underground sound. And I feel like it's a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people. And and it's crazy because the people that do like it and do fuck with it, they fuck with it heavy and they love it. They eat, sh- eat that shit up. I see it. They eat it up like candy. And that's where I kind of want to create this uh, fan base off of. I don't give a fuck about the people who listen to Drake or, or Future or whatever. Shout out to them. But if you're not, I'm not going to make you... You know, you, you, what is it? You could lead a horse to water, right? But unless the horse is thirsty, fuck that analogy. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, if, if you really dig it, then that's where I'm aiming for. I'm not going to try to do all this, figure out, I'm not going to reconfigure my whole musical style and persona just for you to enjoy on a more palatable level. Like, that's not what I've done. That's not what I'm going to do. And that's not what I'm going to try to be. I'm always going to be me. And I'm always going to strive to be the most authentic as I can, no matter how anyone feels about it. I could give a fuck if you don't like it. If you do like it, then welcome aboard. You can hop on the fucking SS Serbavel and we riding on the fucking waves of glory, y'all. People were talking during my set. I said, what kind of shit is that? I literally like, well, the homie Johnny Bar, shout out to Johnny Bars, he was recording me. These fucking group of dudes right behind him were talking. And I'm like, yo, in my head, I'm like, yo, sh-, like telepathically, I'm like, shut, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, you're going to fuck up my recording. And you literally hear them talking the whole way, like the whole three minutes my song is or whatever. They're talking the whole fucking time, which pissed me off because it's like, next time I perform, I'm going to be like, yo, PSA, let me just get this off real quick. If um you want to talk, you can do that shit outside, bro. Respect all the artists that came up good, like came up here to perform. You know what I mean? Y'all pay money too to see a show. Now, guess what? Talking is free, so you could do that shit the fuck outside. You didn't even have to pay to do that shit, bro. So what the fuck is we on, bro? Were we paying money to just fucking be assholes and not respect the artists that are trying to perform on stage? Because not that it really bothered me, but I'm just up there like, man, like, they no reaction. These fools are laughing. I, I mean, laughing. These fools are talking. I'm like, I literally got to block everybody out and just be in my own world, which is cool. But I don't want to do that. I want to be like in the fucking crowd. Like, I want to just be immersed. But if that don't happen, then fuck it. Then we just gonna rock it like that, and I'm gonna just be on my own, like in 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 my own space. Like fuck it, you know what I mean? Just tune everybody out. So nonetheless, though, I feel like I had a great performance. I was a lot more comfortable. Um, shout out to the homie Johnny Bars for recording. Got some follows, and that's what I do it for. I don't do these shows to be the next Biggie Smalls or whatever. I just go out to literally sharpen my performance skills because I feel like making music for me is not a big thing. Like, I'm a way better recording artist than I am a performing artist, and that's what I'm trying to do. Like, my, perf- I would say, like, my recording artistry level is here and my performance level is here. I'm trying to level them off so they meet, you know what I mean? And I just have this boom, like... I don't want people saying, yo, like, yo, Serbs, like, his songs are way better. Like, I don't want people saying, like, his performance sucks. I want him saying, like, damn, this fool's music is hard. And when we went to see him, he fucking killed that shit. Like, that's what I want him to see. Uh, I want him to say, rather. So that's what I do it for. I don't really do it for anything else. And, you know, to build a fan base. Two biggest things. Performance and fan base. That's what you achieve by going out and actually performing. But you can't do that when fucking dickheads are talking and and literally just fucking up the whole ambiance of the whole performance. 
I got employee of the month at work. Let's give a round of applause. That's right. Your boy got employee of the month out of like a hundred. I don't know how many motherfuckers are, are in my shift, but out of everybody, the fucking drivers, the handlers, the fucking, I, I don't know if the managers are in it, but literally out of everybody in my shift, I was the number one draft pick for this employee of the month shit. And I got it. And I got a bonus on my check. Hopefully that comes through next week. Cause I'm trying to buy some cocaine. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But it felt really good, man. Getting, um, employee of the month. I worked very hard for it. Uh, usually when you get employee of the month, it's not for the month they give it to you. It's for the a past month, which for me, it was April. I'm like, wow, three months late. That's kind of late, but better late than never. Right. And I'm proud of myself, man. Um, you know, just working very hard for it, you know, and I, I didn't even do it to be employee of the month. It's just, I bust my ass. I didn't even want a, a, a employee of the month. I wanted a, a BZ and a BZ is basically like a bonus on your check. You get an extra hundred dollars. Really? That's kind of just what I'm aiming for. So they say you, you aim for the, for the, the fucking clouds, you end up on the stars or whatever the fuck. This time, I aim for the the bullseye and I hit I hit the 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 cobra's eye or whatever it is, right? Something better than that. I don't know. Rest in peace to Tony Bennett. One of these days, I knew he was gonna pass away. This when he sang the uh, I think he sang "God Bless America" last year or whatever it was for Fourth of July. I'm like, yo, Tony Bennett. I don't even know how this fool's singing right now, like at his age or whatever. God, God. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm really like fifty fifty with it. I don't know if I want to live that long to to like barely move around and all that. Have somebody wipe my ass or whatever. But that shit just seems kind of crazy. Like the fact that. He was still able to sing at least up to last year. And he had like incredible records like me personally. Uh, everyone knows I want to be around from Joey Diaz. Shout out to him. Uh, a lot of people know him for singing the cover of Fly Me to the Moon or Good Life. I don't know if that's his song, but one of my um, favorite songs from him is They Can't Take That From Me. And that's a beautiful song. He's basically, he's he's singing about the affect, affection he has towards a woman. And he's saying, like, they can't take that away from me. Like, the way you look, the way, the way you dress. Like, awesome song. You know what I mean? Like, one of the illest ways to describe how you feel about a woman and they can't take it away from him. Like, it's fucking Tony Bennett, y'all. Like, literally, rest in peace to the legend. One of they, I remember a girl saying he's just a knockoff Frank Sinatra. I was like, Excuse you, bitch, you're over here wearing like a Scottish fucking quilt. I don't know if you think you're like fucking that one dude from The Simpsons, but you need to fucking chillax with that shit because you look like half a Scottish emo, uh, suicidal broad over here talking shit about a legend. You need to pump the brakes, bitch. You know what I mean? The message of the day is hard work pays off, and just because people don't see it or people want to neglect it or marginalize you or disrespect you, fuck them. You know what I mean? Go after your goals. Hard work does pay off. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be next week or a year from now, but it's going to happen. Trust in the motherfucking process. Your hard work will always pay off in some sort of way. It might not be monetarily. It might not be whatever, but trust me, in some way, shape, or form, God is going to recognize that and reward you. And with that, this is the God's Hour! First Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side. Side of that gat is karma, he wet product, the devil like inside your box now. While the angels fly over my headstone.